Welcome to Kansas City Salute to America, the 4th of July from Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City, where the Royals are set to play the final game of this series with the Cleveland Indians. The fans today are dressed in their red, white, and blue, and a lot of them in their patriotic caps that were given away at last night's game. Independence Day, of course, commemorates the adoption of the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776 and is commonly associated with fireworks, barbecues, parades, and baseball. We have a special guest to sing the national anthem, the pride of Blue Springs, Missouri, and former Royals employee, the talented voice of American Idol fame, Mr. David Cook. At this time, we request that you please remove your hats and place your right hand over your heart or render a salute if you're a veteran of the United States military as we pay respect to our flag and country and honor America with the performance of our national anthem by American Idol Season 7 winner and platinum-selling recording artist, Kansas City's own David Cook. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in That our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the whole? Beautiful flyover from KC Flight. This is the 44th 4th of July game in Kansas City. The Royals hold a 24 and 19 edge. Hi, everybody. Steve Fiziak, Rex Sudler with you. Happy 4th of July to you and your family. This is the halfway point. We have seen 81 games and the Royals playing well. But the biggest difference from last year after 81 and this year is starting pitching last year at this time an ERA of five this year 3.95 and Rex a big reason is the guy who will pitch today James Shields who they got from Tampa Bay no question Fizz the decision in the offseason by management to supply Dayton Moore with the resources necessary to build a staff that's how you win baseball games this team is really close with that staff Fizz and you're right James Shields man There's been nothing wrong with his body of work. He's been fantastic with what he does. The consistency, you see the strikeouts, the quality starts. But really, what he loves the most is the last six wins against the opponents. That's what they're they're winning for him. He may not be getting the wins himself, but he joined this team to help lead on the field and off the field. And winning baseball games is all he cares about. Great movement. We see his great pitches. He's tough. And Jason Giambi, he's happy that he's not in that lineup today. Just one for 15. He said James Shields is a beast. You feel that type of mentality that he has, the intensity, that plays well for him and his teammates that play behind him. He is walking in with his catcher this afternoon, George Kataris. And it is a wonderful afternoon. It is Independence Day. And here in Kansas City, we are so grateful for the men and women who are serving our country. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Ted Lockwood from Olathe, Kansas, currently serving in Kabul, Afghanistan. 
I want to give a shout out to the hometown of Kansas City Royals. This is our year. Go Royals! night for Alex Gordon, the two-time gold glove left fielder getting turned around, crashes into the wall, hits his head, was down for a while, helped off, limped off, and had assistance from the training staff, and at the time was diagnosed with a bruised hip and concussion, possible concussion, concussion-like symptoms. Joel Goldberg out here in left field, and just for the second time this year, the Royals will have a game where someone other than David, uh, other than Alex Gordon starts in left field. It'll be David Lowe. Alex Gordon, for the most part, good news on him. And he talked after the game last night, actually was all smiles, was coherent. Although he did say that he wasn't sure, he didn't think that he had lost consciousness, but he didn't know for sure. So a really scary moment. And now we're dealing with just the caution of a head injury and he has taken a battery of tests in the Royals, saying that all the tests so far have been very encouraging. But he's not in there today. Could miss a few days, too. They want to be careful with this one. But overall, good news on Alex Gordon. Fourth of July baseball is coming up next from Kauffman Stadium. Enjoy.
James Shields broke a 10 start winless drought in his last game at Minnesota now hopes to add here at the K where we welcome you back to the K with the Royals pushing their home record back to 500 this morning with a 6 5 win this game is brought to you in high definition by Time Warner Cable the official TV internet and home phone provider of the Kansas City Royals. Terry Francona, he will go with the lineup that will start with Michael Bourne, who steps to home plate. And he takes ball one low. Temperature 85 degrees at the K. A gorgeous afternoon to watch baseball. And we hope you enjoy your day with your family, with your outside, having a barbecue, watching baseball. Yep, it's a beautiful thing, especially when you don't have to stand in the batter's box and face James Shields. That's a beautiful thing because he's not easy. He's got the four pitches we've all seen, his best being his changeup. He does set it up with a nice two-seam sinking fastball, and he tries to get ahead and finish guys off with his changeup. He's got a nice slider, and he'll roll a couple curves occasionally. And if he has problems, it's usually early. First inning trouble. He does not want to walk Michael Bourne, who we told you last night led the National League in stolen bases three straight years. And there is a strike. Count is full three and two. He did not walk a batter in his last start at Minnesota. Did allow three runs on eight hits over six and a third. But he received nine runs of support. And Bourne goes up the middle for a base hit. The Cleveland Indians lineup with Bourne leading things off will be followed by Estrubal Cabrera, who will be the designated hitter today. Then it's Kipnis, Brantley, Santana, Reynolds, Avilas, Chisenhall, and Stubbs. Watch out for Kipnis, who was the American League player of the month of June. Terry Francona's got four or five of them guys in there that like to run. So this is not just a strictly a home run team. So they can also run the bases and they can attack and steal. James Shields will show you his numbers overall. Opponents hit 242. Okay, home runs just 11. Righties have hit seven, lefties four. 64 stolen bases for Cleveland this year, second most in the American League. Yeah, this is a little, little uh, well rounded offense that Terry Francona has. With the help of his front office, he revamped, got a lot of new guys in there, especially veteran players who have a pretty good idea about the strike zone and how to win. Shields has a very good move. Bourne does not go, and Kataris takes it outside. A 2 and 0 count to Cabrera. And Cabrera, he's got some power, especially from the left side. He's hit more of his home runs as a left hander. He's got five, one from the right side, and James Shields can't keep falling behind. He's got to take it to him. He has fallen behind 3 and 0 oh, and you might remember last night the Royals pitchers walked three batters two of them scored the night before in a 6 5 loss they walked eight also hit a batter. Ball four and two on for Cleveland early. Okay, now this is a defense that can turn two. We saw in game one, four double plays turned in that game. However, David Lowe, we're going to show you the body of work this young man's been doing. Right field mainly is where his spot's been, but he can fill in anywhere else around the outfield. He's very good at getting the balls, gets great jumps, and he has four outfield assists this year, which ranks second amongst AL rookies. And here is Jason Kipnis. We told you American League Player of the Month hitting 419 in June with 25 RBIs. And he shows bunt immediately. This is a guy who's very swift as well. Very quick down the line. It's a 14-game hit streak going. Might have been just a little bluff, but I don't know. He's got the ability to, to move runners, and he's a, a team player. So you don't see many number three hitters squaring around a bunt. Shields finds the strike zone. It's a 1 1 count. Kipnis is only grounded into three double plays this year. The Royals were able to turn four two nights ago, and the middleman was Giovatella every time. 
effectiveness does bunt. And it is rolling fair. And the bay. Oh, at the last moment, it twisted and curled foul. So Mustakas with a very good decision because he had no chance of getting Kipnis. Moose knows all about the Trevor turf here. <laughs> Kansas City look at that he saw I was going to hit that grass lip and then kick a little bit now he's talking to the ball now because that would have been an excellent bunt and would have had him loaded up with nobody out on James so good read now Shields can get the ground ball double play two for six lifetime off of James with a double James, as you know, with an exceptional change up. We just saw that there, fouled off. Kansas City came in at 39 and 42, five games back of first place Detroit as the Tigers won yesterday and they leapfrogged Cleveland. Tribe at 45 and 39, a half game back. Okay, Kipnis, he knows all about that change up from Shields. He struck out three out of his six times. Should have shot a Kipnis in Cleveland after James Shields threw a 3 2 changeup to strike him out, and he just went, Wow. He needs another wow pitch right here. On his hands, fights it off left side. This is game three of this series. Cleveland won the opener 6 to 5. Royals by the same score, one last night or this morning six to five the game ended a little after one o'clock in the morning. Up the middle Shields knocks it down goes second one that's all they'll get. And James upset with himself he thought he had a one six three double play but as soon as that ball hit the turf and I think it, it, it stung him on the ankle. Well, Escobar is smart enough to know that you can't double up Kipnis. He runs really hard. He's got good speed. So just get the out. Hopefully, James is all right. He's got bigger pride than bigger pain. And Rex, when it struck him, I'm not sure which leg they're checking if it's his drive leg or his. His plant leg. Well, it didn't hit him squarely, Fizz. The, so, so hopefully, let's see it again. I don't know if it hit his glove. It hit him in the thigh. I mean, excuse me, in, okay. the, in the hamstring. Maybe right behind the knee, right behind the right knee. It's kind of a hard angle there. We couldn't see it until. God bless replay. So better his hammy than his ankle bone. So get the out. See Escobar. He did all he could just to keep that ball there and get the out. That's what they need. So it was his drive leg that was hit in the back. So now he'll work against Michael Brantley, another guy who will be tough to double. He is 0 for 4 in this series. Yeah, Michael Brantley, his daddy must be really proud of him. He's batting fourth on a very good Cleveland Indians baseball team today. He's a cleanup hitter. 1 for 7 in the series, 0 for 4 last night. I beg your pardon. Lance Barksdale behind the plate in his 10th year as a big league umpire calling balls and strikes. First base is Vic Carpaza, Gary Cedarstrom at second, and Kerwin Danley, the third base umpires. One ball, one strike. Michael Bourne outstanding speed at third base. Jason Kipnis the same at first and he leads the team and steals with 19. He does not go and the pitch is a cold strike so advantage shields at one and two. It's his breaking ball. He's able to command that. That's going to be a good thing for him. It's an excellent pitch to keep him honest. He's got pitches that break in, sinker going away, changeup going away. He's got some east and west movement, which really tricks the hitter.
Brantley stays alive at one and two and we were really impressed the way James pitched at progressive field against the Indians twice he worked out of bases loaded jams Rex in the third and fifth inning before he allowed a leadoff home run in the sixth to Carlos Santana he would receive a no decision in that game. Up the middle base hit Bourne will score one nothing Cleveland. OK so folks might be saying uh oh well don't really say that because it's been taking James some time to get himself acclimated to the first inning his pitches where he's locating he's done that this year he's given a 14 first inning runs the ball stayed up over the plate that's well struck by the cleanup hitter we have seen some very professional at bats by Cleveland in this series with two strikes and not a great example of not trying to do too much Santana the batter three for 15 in his career against James and took him deep in the last start I told you at progressive field that was to lead off the sixth inning about that 15 runs allowed in the first of his 18 starts he came in ninth in the American League in ERA 2.99. So if anybody's wondering if James Shields stayed here till 2 2 30 in the morning no, he left early in the ball game yesterday so he can go home and be well rested. He's just having some command issues a little bit here, here early and he's elevating a few pitches. Hopefully he was asleep at this time last night as we were the first to bring in Fourth of July weekend. Good pitch there on the outside corner on a fastball count. There was a breaking ball and it's a 2 2 situation to Carlos Santana. He has already thrown though 26 pitches in the first inning. Yeah, but you know we've seen this uh, you know it's not the first time so what, what typically happens is after a, a veteran or a young starter get out there in the first inning and they have their difficulties. Usually after that they usually go one two three you know 15 pitches after that and that's what James Shields and George Kataris who's catching him today want. Counts full. The Royals were able to end Cleveland's five game win streak this morning. The tribe came in hot. 11 of their previous 15 and their offense really powerful and there's a line drive caught by Givatella lobs it to Hosmer safe back at first base. Wow that was almost something really special is that Johnny Givatella is answering the call when it comes to is he ready defensively that you don't teach that now he was a little off balance had he made a, a little bit more accurate throw Hosmer would have been able to double him up and get James out of the inning. So we see this an awful lot by watching the Royals daily. Athletic players make brilliant plays ends up saving runs and men Hosmer almost got him on the backside on the wallet. First base umpire Vic Garbaza. I don't know if he saw that or not but it's a good try. Now Mark Reynolds who's had a rough time in this series 0 for 7 with four strikeouts. As you know and you can tell very good power leads the team in home runs with 15. Thirty second pitch of the first inning coming from James Shields. One ball, two strikes.
He has so much confidence in his changeup that we have seen him throw it four or five times in a row. That young man gets a souvenir on the 4th of July. Reynolds, he drops the head of the bat. He prefers pitches, you know, belt high like most sluggers, but he has the ability to lift them when they're down low, too. But he's got a quick bat. Be careful with this guy. Ooh. Got him on the inside corner. Reynolds disagrees, but after a 34 pitch first inning, Shields gives up just one. Had Johnny Geo not leaped up there and caught that ball, be different. Nice job getting out. Lottery played the Powerball and Mega Million Scratchers game to win 100 grand or more. And by your Kansas City Chevy dealer, the official vehicle of the Kansas City Royals. With Alex Gordon not playing because of a right hip contusion and a possible concussion, Ned Yost penciled in David Lowe to lead things off today, and David will also play Alex's spot in left field. Escobar goes two, then Hosmer, Butler, Moustakis, Kane, Kataris, Giovatella, and Gerard Dyson. All right, see if they can get on base and steal and have a little track meet breakout today on Jimenez. Okay, 44 walks, it's a pretty high number. Wait him out. A lot of moving parts. He's got a lot of pitches, too, that he develops. He's got a four and two seam fastball. Slider, curve, split finger. Definitely his keys. Strike one. Try to work ahead. And you would think patience would be the key because he has walked 44. Low goes after the pitch and pops up to center field. Let's check out the Cleveland Indian defense. To see if you can build a few more pitches. In the defense, now they made three errors last night. Didn't help them any. On the season, they've made 50 errors now, which is really just a mark. To me, if, if the team has range, if they've got some, you know, some athletic players out there and they make those plays uh, that really help the pitcher, they're a lot better off. Avilas, nice ball player. Oh. Three errors last night. Hurt Cleveland and now Escobar will bat. He's hitting 250 this year. Enjoyed his 17th infield hit last night when he glanced one off the glove of the third baseman, Mark Reynolds. It's a wonderful weapon if you have it. Speed, staying on top of the ball, choppers, and butts, which is one thing that they've been talking with Esky about more. Pedro Gafal said, hey, he's, well, we're going to try to get, get him to bunt like he did last year. A little bit more consistency.
Jimenez gets back in the count at two balls and two strikes. 29 year old right hander is making his 17th start of the year. Has a 463 ERA, but pitched much better in June. Three and one record in six starts. The 309 ERA. Heck, how about him on the road, Fizz? He's been great. He's got a 3 1 0 ERA in nine games compared to a 6.82 ERA at home. So he, he definitely likes the road cooking a little better than the home cooking. Rip foul as Jimenez stayed with the fastball in on Eski. The Royals did face him in June back at Progressive Field, and you talked about that. He threw 114 pitches in five and two thirds innings. Cleveland has had to use their bullpen a lot in this series and a lot recently because during that four game sweep of Chicago, remember they played 48, let me see, four games in 48 hours. Escobar grounds out to short, to gone. Mike Avilas, former Royal, he was drafted by Kansas City and played from 2003 through 2011 in this organization. Come, I said he's a nice player that can hit. Especially well, here is one of last night's heroes, Eric Hosmer, in that seventh inning. He launched a home run that went 436 feet to dead center field, won the game six to five. I mean, I don't think anybody saw this coming. But when that ball hit his bat, I thought that they accidentally let a firework off, a big M80 up there, because it was loud, and he was able to lift that ball that was down around his shins. To dead center field, that's special. That's a Chris Davis-like stroke. And look at the company he's keeping since June 25th. I mean, he has, what is it, seven of his eight home runs? Since June 13th and since June 25th, he's hit some bombs. I mean, three of the longest home runs by Kansas City this year have been hit by Hosmer. He had that monster against the Chicago White Sox off a of lefty Hector Santiago that went 455. Yeah, you know, that, that's that's for all the chicks that, that dig the long ball fizz, you know, the distance <laughs> and all that stuff. But look, scraping the back of the wall is exactly what they want. The Royals 51 home runs. This year they rank second to last in base or in American League. However, the last nine games, 13 home runs, that ranks amongst the highest totals in baseball, dating back to June 23rd, Fizz. Mm -hmm. So look, the Royals home run department, it's starting to happen. And Eric's so happy that his family's in town. He gets a base hit to left field. That was so cool last night, Rex, when he was on with Joe Goldberg at the end of the game when they, he was talking about his home run. To, but he had to say, hey, would everybody cheer for my family up in the, uh, the family yeah. section here in the lower level? Why not? Celebrate a win like that after a big home run. Now watch it. Now this is one of the reasons he's hitting homers, Fizz. Okay? It's a lousy single, but look at how he's out front. Now his hips have kind of turned around a little bit, but he's just reaching out. That ball's way off the plate, and he's got tremendous balance there. So he's giving it his lower half, going down and just slapping it in the hole. That helps you see the ball longer. Now Billy Butler. Let's check him out. This is a this is a beautiful swing. A lot of people like the home run powers of swing, but I love how he adjusts on it. Look at that back leg. Look at that, the bend back there. That's going down and reaching it and slapping it out there. It's not easy. But when you're in a groove and you've got good hands, oh. you can adjust like that. Now, don't you think Billy Butler would love to have Alcides Escobar's 17 infield hits? He's a couple this year. But think about that. 17 hits over the course of a year, that does wonders for your average. And he just, that's just not his game. He's, he's more of a sit and drive guy. I'll come in. He's a bus driver. Well, that was his job last year, and he was named designated hitter of the year in the American League when he hit 313 with 29 home runs and 107 RBIs. And you surround him with guys who can protect him. Now Hosmer in front of him, and today Mustakas behind him. Salvador Perez given the day off. 
after he finally finished at 1 a.m. Billy's got some funky sleeves on today. Maybe that's the 4th of July related. Got a little bit of red and blue on him. Don't usually see him with sleeves. Yeah, Hosmer's got it going with the left arm. Billy's got it going right and left. Happy for it. He's got a home run in 15 at bats against Ibaldo. Three walks. And he needs just two hits today to tie the great Fred Patek, ninth in Kansas City history. Billy just 27, though. Patek had 1,036 hits. 3 2 count. Wait for your cookie. If he's not going to give it to you, pass the baton on to Moose. He doesn't have to do everything and, and pick everyone up. He's been good at taking his walks this year. Osmer goes pitch outside. KC has a two out rally here in the first with runners on first and second and two out. Okay. Now it's time for Moose. What has he done? He's, he's four for 15 with a couple of doubles, a couple of walks against them all in his career. So he, he's got a little confidence coming in. More importantly is how he is playing of late. He's hit in 10 of his last 11 hitting 381 with six multi hit games and it was great to see him get that home run on Friday in Minnesota. That home run ended a 124 at bat drought. Keep calm and moose on. <laughs> I think there's some fans here that love to see moose on the loose especially. With a cookie out over the middle. Here he goes. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, you were kind of feeling pretty good about Moose today on our drive in. Yeah. Moose, he just saw two of the best pitches that he missed his throne. The first changeup started at Moose's hip and it ended up crossing the plate. And that was a slider. So he's really saying, I got to be careful with Moose. Got it in on him. Santana off with the mask, throws it away, makes the catch. The Royals will strand a couple in the first inning. Cleveland holds on to their one nothing lead. Second inning, Cleveland leads 1 0. Mike Avilas, former Royal, will step to the plate, followed by Lonnie Chisenhall and Drew Stubbs. Ball one as Shields trying to find his good command. He threw 34 pitches in that first inning, and only 20 of them made the strike zone. And he has fallen behind Avilas 2 and 0. And you know, this is one of the reasons why you get an ace. 
continue winning streaks to stop losing streaks and to get a huge series victory on the third game. They're counting on James to set the tone. He got that fastball in on him quickly and barely fouled off to two count. We are halfway through the season for 81 games a record of 39 and 42 for Kansas City slightly better than last year's 37 44 mark. That's whacked down the line. David Lowe plays it off the wall of will have a two base hit. He's seven for 21 now actually eight for 22 now a couple of home runs and Vilas is off James Shields so he's got some confidence. He just pounded that ball right by Moose. Well this is one of the reasons you get an ace our Toyota League leaders show that Shields right there with names like Sale and Darvish and Hernandez and Iwakuma. How about Iwakuma? Not a lot of people gave him a lot of notoriety at the beginning of the season, and he has been brilliant for Seattle. Here is Chisholm Hall who goes after the first pitch. Tell you, if Chisholm Hall wants to impress Terry Francona, he'll do all he can to pull that ball to the right side. Try to get that runner over to third base. Oh my. Almost a little miscommunication between Lorenzo Kane and Gerard Dyson before Kane finally grabbed it by. That will also allow Mike Avilas to get to third base. It's going to happen. You got guys playing different spots in the outfield all the time. There's not had been a lot of consistency out there and they're just getting to know one another. Kane center fielder too. He's calling for it now Lorenzo Kane is. Then he took his eye off the ball at the last minute, but thankfully he's able to pick it up again. So Chisholm Hall did his job. Royals bring the infield in with Hosmer at first, Giovatella second, Escobar short, Mustakas third. And he almost hit Drew Stubbs in the back. This is where James will go for the strikeout. I mean, James, one of the top strikeout pitchers in the American League, he's in the top 10. And you've got a guy, Drew Stubbs, who strikes out an enormous amount, 88 times. Well, you'd hope that he could, but the infielders are in. You see, he hits one. I'll try to get a Vilas at home. Stubbs is driven in 30. Hit well. And it is 3 nothing Cleveland. Okay, 2 0. He got him something he can handle. That's his fifth of the year. 20th RBI. See what that was? Hittable. On a pitch at 84, that's a straight changeup that didn't change enough. Seventh home run. 33rd RBI. Oh. Now back to Michael Bourne. Okay, if this was a fastball, I don't know if Stubbs would have had the ability to turn on it like that. That was a changeup at 84 that was up over the plate, and really a lot of hitters are going to square that ball up. So James right now trying to find himself. He's already thrown 46 pitches to get four outs. And this might be one of those grind it through games, somehow trying to keep your club in it.
looked like James, you know, he does fall off the mound hard to the right side on the first baseline. Looked like his shoulders just having a hard time staying straight downhill. Gets a strike. Bourne had thrown the bat away, and no umpire likes that. Lance Barksdale. With a look back at Michael Bourne as if to say, I'll call the balls and strikes, young man. Well, lots of times, uh, hitter will pick up his bat, and then he, before he gets back in the box, he'll look at the umpire and apologize. Just so you can stay on the good side. Shields has faced nine batters. Four of them have hits. Two extra base hits. And Bourne doing a great job battling. Two left field. Easy play for David Lowe. There's the second out of the second. Now is Struble Cabrera, the 27 year old from Venezuela. Cabrera loves it middle in. That's where he's looking. He wants to see if he can jump on one. Didn't mean to do it. Now he's behind the count. 0 2. Starting pitching establishes everything. Day Shields for Kansas City, Jimenez for Cleveland. James throwing way too many pitches. And the reason, two innings. One of the reasons too, Fizz, is that his command not being what it what it should be or what he's used to, he's elevating pitches. So if they're not squaring him up, they're fouling him off. Because those are a little bit easier to get a bat on. To right field, Kane comes on to make the catch, but a big hit on a James Shields changeup that stayed up and Bruce Stubbs drove it out. Three nothing, Cleveland.
After your July 4th holiday, well, join us for the Royal Summer Fireworks, courtesy of High V and Pepsi tomorrow against the Oakland A's. Plus, it's Buck Night. Hot dogs, peanuts, and small soft drinks are just $1. Go to Royals.com or call 1-800-6-ROYALS for tickets for Summer Fireworks and Buck Night. There's a little red, white, and blue. Ready for a holiday celebration. Lorenzo Kane will lead things off for Kansas City after Shields has given up one in the first and two in the second. Kane, Kataris, Giovatella. Kipnis will take care of Lorenzo Kane. One out. Here's I need to give a happy birthday shout out to Agnes Sutera, 96 years young today from Westwood, Kansas, mother of nine, 19 grandkids, 14 great grandkids. Thanks, Agnes, for your longtime support of the Royals. Happy birthday today. Wow, nine children. Yeah, 19 grandkids, 14 grades. Incredible. She's got a big party this afternoon, doesn't I'll she? I'll bet. Well, Agnes, we hope we can bring you a royal victory. Well, we can talk about it, but they've got to do it. Exactly. Kataris, he's a guy, if you watch his batting practice, Fizz, his first round he hits the ball to left field, but then after that, he loses a lot of baseballs over that fence during BP. He's got some pop. You play once a week, you know, you, you do one thing good, you've had a great day. And we've seen him shoot that ball over the wall. And he is the most disciplined of all Royals. And he will take the walk here, the second walk issued by Manus. Just a reminder, fans, as you enjoy a cold one this afternoon, we want you to look forward to Miller time. It's brought to you by Miller Lite. Okay, and Gio, he made a, an outstanding catch in the first inning. Cleveland would have a four nothing lead if it wasn't for that leaping catch. He's already done one good thing. He has hit the ball hard in this series, but is 0 for 7. He almost doubled him up. Just couldn't get that lob in there. <laughs> That's some athleticism and quick feet. I thought he got him on the tag. Johnny had three hits in his 2013 debut when he was called up from the minor leagues. Chris Getz going back down to get some at bats for Triple A Omaha. And the Royals did have a sterling week in the minor leagues. I mean, Danny Duffy was the PCL player of the week, 2 0 record. 11 strikeouts, 10 and two-thirds as he comes back from Tommy John surgery. Last week, Brooks Pounders was named the Texas League Player of the Week, throwing a no-hitter. Dig it, Bruce. Daniel Stump threw a no-hitter. Class A ball. And Whit Merrifield at Northwest Arkansas was named Texas League Player of the Week, going 11 for 16. I heard Zimmer starting to pitch like he's capable. Yeah. He's always showing good stuff. Just talking with Dayton and JJ about his development. The scouts rave about his stuff. 96, 97, 98. But still. Getting that command down. Givatella to right field. Stubbs there. Two out. Beautiful day at Kauffman Stadium. We hope you're enjoying your day with your family, wherever you might be here in Kansas City. We always pay respect for those who serve our country. And we salute you for serving our nation here in the United States and foreign countries all over the world.
I saw a special last night before going to bed at 2.30 this morning. And it was really emotional. It showed the veterans that were coming home from Afghanistan, surprising their, their relatives, surprising their kids, you know, in big venues across America. It was it was so oh. special. I, I, I didn't, really didn't want to have to get up out of bed this early and, 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 and wipe my face, but I cried because it was just so warming to see these people. So they take care of our country. They protect us, and they miss their families for years at a time. You said there was an absolutely oh. sensational moment in Tampa, St. Pete, with uh, a guy wearing the catcher's mask. Yeah, the, the, the veteran was all dressed up in catcher's gear, so the, his daughter was throwing out the first pitch, and she didn't even know it was him. And it was beautiful. He took his mask off. A lot of tears. Oh, man, it was, it was too much. I, I couldn't contain it, but I'm only human. But Dyson here at 3-2, see if he can get him a good ball to drive. A win today is blowing from the right field foul pole out to center field towards the left. Not saying he's going to hit a homer, but he's got a good hit count right here. He takes low ball four, so the Royals have been issued three walks. Not one has hurt him and as yet, but David Lowe has come through in the clutch a lot recently. He had that sensational game on Sunday with three doubles and a home run. His home run gave the Royals the lead. They would eventually win by one run. Low hitting 263 overall with runners in scoring position. 364 with two outs and runners in scoring position. Strike one. Okay, they've got to get him at some point in this game. Might as well be now. David Lowe, you know, he, he's got to be able to stay on top of that baseball when it's up. He can't hit anything in the air. He's got occasional pop. Too short. Cabrera, or Avilas, excuse me, throws him out, and that will do it for Kansas City. They leave two in the second inning. They left four in the first two frames. <laughs> Back to Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. During pregame, we showed you this wonderful feature on the tragedy that took place in Moore, Oklahoma, and how that community is healing through baseball and softball. Well, the Tupin family lived there. They now live in Kansas City, but they lost several friends and 
great people in Moore, Oklahoma during that tornado that struck the area. And the Tupin family is now joining us, uh, Chris and Heather and uh, Zach and Eric. We uh, welcome you to the broadcast booth. And you're doing this in loving memory of Sidney Angle, who passed away, a dear friend of Zach here. Could you talk about that a little bit, what about what took place in your friendship with the Angles? Sure, absolutely. First, thanks for having us. You uh, bet. It's a very great way to honor and remember Sydney, and it's uh, very, very much healing for all of us. So first off, just really appreciate that. But uh, the Angles, they've been, uh, they've been friends of ours for a long time, and, and uh, Zach, of course, was the, uh, the closest to Sydney, as their, uh, their ages were the, were the closest between, between everybody. And Zach, what was that experience like for you? You're seven years old, and uh, Sydney was a dear friend of yours. It was hard. It was very difficult, I can imagine. So, I heard you're a great baseball player. Mm-hmm, I am. And how, about, how about your brother? Um, your brother, he can play a little bit too, can he? Yeah. Well, does that does that bring out happiness in you? Mm-hmm. Baseball makes you pretty happy. Yeah, baseball makes me pretty happy. What are your What are your plans when you get older? Are you going to be in the major league baseball? Um. Yeah. Um. I either want to play pitcher or outfield. And Eric Hosmer signed a baseball for you, didn't he? Mm -hmm. That is fantastic. But Eric, I wanted to ask you, you've been back to Moore, Oklahoma. Can you tell our fans what it's like since the uh, the tragedy took place? Sure. It's, uh, it's uh, the best way to put it is complete devastation. It's uh, one of those things you really can't believe until you actually see it. It's um, just basically and not living there and then going back. What you used to remember, what you saw before, what you remember being somewhere, a landmark, a store, anything, a house is gone. Uh, our old house that we had there, we drove by just because we wanted to see what it looked like, and it, just like all the others, was, was gone as well, which is, which is just even though it's just a house, was very difficult because it's, it's the first house that the Zach ever lived in, which made it just one of those things you've got memories with, and you just see it gone. James Shields right now throwing with two on nobody out in the third inning and Cleveland already leading three nothing so he's trying to keep it close. So how's the softball and, and the baseball community helped there and more. Sure I, as far as I mean it's really amazing to see how much everybody is really rallied around and I'm going to let Heather talk about that because once the tornado happened she went down there. And really had a, a way to. Uh... It was really impressive. Within 24 to 48 hours, um, the softball community had really rallied around the Angle family. And they did something called Helmets for Hope, which was softball players from all over the Oklahoma City community um, gathered together teams that really fight against each other and have very heated rivalries came together. And they stood um, at intersections along the highways. And with signs, you know, honoring Sydney and honoring the Angle family, um, getting money to help the Angles begin rebuilding and help make that next step just a little bit easier for them. And it's just grown from there. Teams from Indiana, from, from Arizona, an amazing team, the Arizona Wildfire, a 14-year-old team, um, within a week had raised $1,000 at a car wash for the wow. Angle family and, and brought it to the, the first uh, We Play for Sydney tournament just a week after the tornado hit. Um, it, it's it's just it's overwhelming. It's absolutely amazing at what kids just all over the country are doing to just to honor a very very special little girl. And for fans who are in the Kansas City area listening to our broadcast, should they go to RedCross.org and contribute that way? Absolutely. Uh, the Red Cross has done some absolutely incredible work. Um, you know, going going to the RedCross.org website, um, you know, using the text feature, is a great way to give back uh, to the entire community and more, not just more, but uh, communities like El Reno, um, which was also hit, and also Shawnee, they were also hitting tornadoes during that 10-day that period that was just so devastating to central Oklahoma. Right now, two on. A 2-2 two -two count to Carlos Santana. He again rolls it foul. So this has been quite a battle for James Shields, who's thrown 68 pitches and not yet through three innings. I think Cleveland wants to Get in the Royals bullpen. They're really taxing his pitch count. Hey Zach, is that where you got those freckles on the baseball field? No. No. What do you mean? Those are angel kisses, man. No, they are. 
What do you mean? <laughs> that, 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 that's when you're out playing baseball. Sometimes that's where you get kissed out there when you get a little bit of freckles in. There's nothing wrong with freckles. <laughs> Carlos Santana takes strike three, an important first out here in the third inning. And nothing wrong with that last pitch. James Shields now is looking for a ground ball double play, but that's a beauty. Keep it right there. He hasn't been able to hit that spot all day, you know, and when you're, when you, is it easier for you to hit a baseball that's up here or down here? What's, what's your pitch? That's right, and most guys out there love it up here too. And when you do that, sometimes they put the bat on the ball. But right here, it stayed in the park. And they're going to try and advance. Lowe's throw is cut off by Escobar, so the runners do advance to second and third, but two outs as Reynolds flies out to left. And we've talked about the base running ability of this Cleveland Indians team. They're going to take advantage when they can. They've got very good team speed. Look at these guys. Their heads up. They see low that's having to backpedal to get back on that ball. And when a, a fielder is going back, it's hard for him to go forward. What position do you like to play? Um, uh, pitcher. Pitcher. So how about your brother? What's he play? Uh, I play pitcher and first base mostly. Right on. You got a hard fastball? No. <laughs> Avilas to left field, low at the warning track, makes the catch. A good job by James Shields and Tupac family. Thank you very much for all the contributions that you made to Moore, Oklahoma. Great thank going, you very Zach. much. Way to go, buddy. O'Neill legacy seat today as the executive director of Safe Home. Sharon helped lead the growth of the shelter from a small rundown grassroots shelter for 29 battered women and their children to a state of the art facility for 45 that serves 6,500 individuals each year. Throughout her time, Sharon added courts and hospitals and a professional counseling program and an education and prevention program for students. And after serving for 20 years and winning many awards for the home, Sharon retired from the organization in February. But we really appreciate her work in our community. Now, Cedis Escobar will lead things off, and he sends that one foul back into the seats. KC is threatened in the first two innings, but they've left two stranded in each inning. I hadn't been able to crack him yet. Although he's doing a good job, like he always has been, especially on the road, with mixing his pitches up. Strikes out Escobar. Okay, when those base runners from Cleveland advanced last inning on a ball to the left fielder low, 
Afterwards, Rusty Kuhn says it's school time. We got to talk about that. Dyson, you're the guy who's got to be his eyes for him. You got to be able to tell David Lowe to, he's going, they're going, throw to second. And that's all about communication. If you don't have communication in the outfield, you're going to struggle. In all of baseball, period, you got to be able to talk to one another, help them out. And that's what Rusty's job is. He's there to help teach these young guys. Kansas City has one hit in the game, and it was by Eric Hosmer, his single in the first inning. Jimenez has him down 0 2. One thing I've noticed about Hibaldo is that he's his tempo is much better. He's getting the ball and throwing it. He's he's not out there posturing around. He's keeping his defense on his toes. And he's not allowing the hitters to think. Which really can be good for his hitters don't really want to think. But when you got a, a whole bunch of pitches like this guy does. To first tough. base Reynolds will take care of him two outs. Fans, we want you to come out to the K this Saturday as the Royals salute the history of the Kansas City A's. The first 10,000 fans will receive a Charlie O t shirt in honor of the old A's mascot, courtesy of Fox Sports Kansas City. Join us for a pregame ceremony with Kansas City A's alumni and a Charlie O look alike mule. We'll be greeting fans in the outfield experience. Gates open at 11:30 in the morning for this special Saturday afternoon game. Go to Royals.com or call 1-800-6-ROYALS for tickets. I had a dear friend who was bitten by Charlie O the mule back in the Kansas City A's days. No way. Yeah. She reached in, tried to eat at some grass, and bit her hand. Well, she recovered. She did. Okay. And that was not the owner. That was the actually the mule. The owner could be a little ornery too. That will hit the top of the Royals dugout. Those were the old days at the old Kansas City Municipal Stadium. And did you know the ball boy did not deliver the new baseballs to the umpire? There was a trap door behind home plate that opened up and a rabbit came out. With a bucket of, of baseballs. Well, there's a, a lot of young people out there. Oh, it's hilarious. Including myself, are saying, How could that happen? What do you mean? Okay, now, now you talk about a, a mule being ornery. There's Ken Hawk Harrelson on Charlie O. I know. I mean, Charlie O's got a gout going. <laughs> and, and that was in Yankee Stadium, Fizz, but if Charlie O is going to let some uh, a ball player get on its back, he must be pretty tame. Why did Charlie O bite your friend? You know what? It was <laughs> 45 years ago. Okay. So 50 years ago. That's more like it 50 years ago. Ground ball to Reynolds. Butler is out. Jimenez really looks sharp this afternoon. So Casey's going to have to grind this one to come back for the 27th victory this year.
assigned to the Staff Judge Advocate, United States Forces Afghanistan. Hometown is Ellis, Kansas. My team is the Kansas City Royals. And Patrick, we thank you for your service to America as James Shields goes here in the fourth inning. A fly ball immediately struck by Lonnie Chisenhall to David Lowe, and there's one out. And we are now joined by Jeff Montgomery. Monty wanted to ask you about James Shields because command has been an issue the last three starts for him. Yeah, we're not used to seeing that from James Shields. Unfortunately, that's been the case. And it seems like when he gets on top of the baseball, everything's good. When he's finishing down, everything's good. But he's really had difficulty doing that consistently today. You know, um, it's it's about his shoulder, too. I'm, he's flying open. He's a little bit too fast coming out of that delivery, Monty. And that's got to be an issue for him. I've noticed that a lot today, Rex, more so than we've seen over this past few starts. But that's just a key for most all pitchers. You have to stay close in order to get the ball down in the strike zone, and he's not been able to do that. Now Drew Stubbs, the batter. So, Monty, what, 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 does he need Dave Island to say hey look you're not doing that or is he got enough maturity and you know, I would expect that he can correct itself no he knows exactly what he's doing oftentimes it's hard to to, to kind of get a click back in because it's a matter of almost like a hitter Rex you have to try easier to do it when you try harder you just really almost revert and go the opposite direction so much about pitching and hitting are identical about balance about mechanics one hit one pitcher trying to get a hitter off balance if the hitter can get the pitcher off balance, he makes mistakes and he gets hit. It's interesting how the two go hand in hand. Yeah, you, know, you have to let it happen. It's hard to make it happen. Stubbs to right field and Kane runs it down before the wall and there's two outs here in the fourth inning. Go we'll take a look at Mike Avila's bat here in the second inning. Whenever you fly over, you see how that shoulder is going toward the first base side. And when when that happens, everything's going to go up and into a right-handed batter. Just you're really flying over. Same thing happened on the on the changeup to Stubbs, flying open way too early, and everything going east and west rather than right at the plate. You don't want things going sideways. You want things going straight toward the plate. Will he go in in between innings and check out video of himself? Well, I think it's something that whenever. Whenever you recognize it, you're going to go in and maybe have a chat with your pitching coach. You're going to do whatever you have to do, but making the adjustments the key. Well, he gets a, his most quick and comfortable inning here in the fourth inning as he gets the three Indians in order all on flyouts to the outfield. Brought to you by Panera Bread. Try pasta the Panera way. Live consciously. And by Ford. See the new F-150 at your Midwest Ford dealer today. And by ATT Uverse TV. Check availability at 1-800-PICK-ATT. Rethink possible. We come to you from Kansas City. Steve Fiziot, Rex Hudler, Jeff Montgomery, Joel Goldberg. 
Three nothing Cleveland. Mike Mustakas will leave things off and he goes after the first pitch and lifts it foul. He popped up to the catcher with a couple on in the first. Money Jimenez is very difficult to pick up. I can tell you from a hitter standpoint with all those arms and legs and that little dangling uh, when he holds that ball out there on the side kind of rattles it around a little bit. That's deceptive. He creates deception by all the, the body parts that are moving. He's got long fingers long arms. He's just a, a guy that has a lot of moving parts and like you say he's able to create the deception by doing that. It reminds me of two Royals pitchers. Aaron Crow with that little thing he's got behind his back there and then also Mark Gubazal the way he would have that. A lot of moving parts like that. Mustakas flies out to left. And you know, the fact that he's mixing all five or six of his pitches, and I say that because he changes the speeds. The, really, a hitter, you can't look for a particular pitch. It's important to zone him. Put him in a, in a spot where what Pedro Grafal says is your spot. And then go for that whenever it gets in that area. Right again, it's the opposite of the the, the pitcher. You got to be a hitter. You want to get in counts that are going to be favorable to you. And he t has a tendency to do that at times. But today he's really he's been out ahead of a lot of hitters, and the Royals have really kind of played into his game. Well, he has pretty much dominated this year. Shut them out in seven innings back in April. Allowed two runs in five and two thirds in the start a few weeks ago at Progressive Field in Cleveland, and has shut them out. And a three and a third thus far, although that was his 61st pitch. Kane to right field. It's a base hit. Only the Royals' second hit of the afternoon. When you think of a Pobaldo Hermet. And as all those working parts, when he gets it together, he is one of the best pitchers in baseball. We all remember 2010 when he had that glorious season for the Colorado Rockies 19 wins, a 288 earned run average, threw a no hitter, and was third in the National League in the Cy Young race. 15 wins that year, Monty, by the All Star break. Well, it's a, it's a just a key for him. It's just a command, like any pitcher. Command is going to be the big, biggest thing. But for a guy like him that has all the different moving parts, when he's off a little bit, you can really kind of exploit that and, and, and beat him by beating him, by making him with those strikes and, and not the quality strikes, hitter strikes. Hey, let's not forget that he was throwing 98 to exactly. 100 miles an hour. That's so a big step to make adjustments. Yeah, you know what? You, you're gonna you're gonna not be able to keep that type of velocity throughout your career. So what guys do is they just learn how less is more. You know, I don't have to blow it by guys anymore. But when you have that weapon, you're gonna put all those wins out there. Great spot there. He's hitting. He's hitting them. He's putting it right where he wants it today. And nothing against the Royals' offense. When you've got a pitcher who's hitting his spots, you don't hit very often. Right, good pitching always beats good hitting. Oh. Barely grazed the outside corner. I don't think George liked the call. It makes it two and two instead of three and one. You see the life on that pitch. Yeah. A, a lot, lot of strike. A lot of late movement. Kane has stolen nine bases this year. And Carlos Santana has only thrown out 13.5 percent of runners. He's caught five. 37 have been successful. Sometimes you know you, you, you got to create run scoring opportunities. And with one out, maybe he sends Kane here. Guitarist. Be a little bit more aggressive here, three and two. Try to hit one on the ground, pull one. Kane does not go, and the pitch is swung on and missed. Maybe that's what Ned was a little bit afraid of there too. We'll strike him out, throw him out. Possibility. You get downloads up to 50 megabits per second with Time Warner Cable Ultimate Internet. Jimenez has topped out at 95 shields just a tick under. But this game has been about command in the strike zone. Oh. James has allowed three runs on six hits. And Jimenez 
has allowed zero on two hits. Both have been singles, one by Hosmer, one by Kane. He's at first. That is always key. Nine of 17 first pitch strikes put in the offense on the defensive. You know, another thing about those first pitch strikes, he's thrown a lot of those off pitches, not just fastballs for first pitch strike, right? splitter, he's sort of slider, he's sort of off pitches for first pitch strikes. Giabatella to center field, but playable for Bourne, who makes the catch about 10 feet from the warning track, and that ends the fourth. This year, 18 saves, and Jeff Montgomery, you were a three-time All-Star at that same position. What makes him so good? Well, he's got the ability to throw three very high-quality pitches in about any county he wants to throw them in, and I like the fact that when he's on, everything is moving down, 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 and gets a lot of ground balls, a lot of strikeouts, high strikeout percentage. Got to like what you see from Holland. Outside of that four-seam riser we see once in a while, he does have a little bit of lift in that four-seamer at times, Monty, but most of the time it's going down. Yeah, he's got electric stuff when his splitter and his slider are going down doesn't matter left hander or right hander absolutely no chance James Shields gave up one in the first two in the second settled down a little bit after a, a, a wobbly third and then was excellent in the fourth and now a good off speed pitch that he throws to Cabrera that swung on and missed Cabrera two for eight with a walk in this series. Swing and a miss. And Cabrera is down on three pitches. Fans bring the kids to the game for every family fun day Sunday to enjoy face painters, balloon artists, kids entertainment by Radio Disney's Road Crew, and much more. Sundays at the ballpark is your family destination. Go to royals.com slash Sunday for tickets. Third strikeout for Shields. Now Kipnis the batter. I like the way that he just really kind of let this pitch execute. He didn't really try to force things. Nice and easy. Whenever he's on his game, it's like it's effortless for him. But when he's trying to force it, when he's trying to press it, that's when it's more difficult. See that spike curveball is just gonna kind of let it finish down under the bat. Kipnis has a 2 1 count. And to finish your thoughts on Greg Holland, the great closers I, I have been around, whether it's Troy Percival or Francisco Rodriguez or Dennis Eckersley, 
they always had that uncanny ability to let the bad go sooner than the rest of, uh, of us. Well, it doesn't matter if it's in the game itself or the next day. You have a bad game, you got to come back out the next day, be ready to do your job. And we saw Greg Holland get in some trouble early in games during the course of the year, but he's, for the most part, been able to work himself out. I've only two blown saves on the season. So that's part of it, just that short memory. Uh, and as an example, when Escobar couldn't make the play last night in the ninth inning, I asked you, and you said he, he quickly turned the page. It's like he gave up a base hit or a walk. Kipnis to right field. Kane pulls it down for out number two. And Nani, I remember Dennis Eckersley could not explain what drove him to success. And finally, I think it was Bobby Hull, who was reading an article about an NHL player who said, I'm afraid of not being able to do my job. And and Dennis turned to his wife and he said, this is me. Fear of failure. Yeah. Yep. And that guy had so much success. So did you. And I know I've, I've asked you countless times. How long did it take you before you developed that mentality to let the bad go when you would blow a save? Well, it's it's something that some guys have the ability to do. And you, you, I don't know if that's something you really learn. I think it's something that's inside of you. And I, I think it's just you have to experience to get through it. Escobar takes care of Michael Brantley. And we will say thank you very much to Jeff Montgomery for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Happy fourth, Monty. You the, got it. The Professor Montgomery teaching closing. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. One of the most memorable quotes in baseball history, Lou Gehrig saying goodbye to the game after ALS cut his career short, July 4th, 1939. So Dyson's got some of those sleeves on too. Dyson will lead things off for Kansas City in the bottom of the fifth inning. Rex, as you know, I was raised in Kansas City, but my mom and dad came from back east, my mom from New York, and she was at that game July 4th, 1939 at Yankee oh, Stadium with my grandpa Howard. Really? Can you imagine seeing that moment and then years later knowing the importance of it? That's, that's a special thing. Especially a lot of people dealing with that same disease now, ALS. I know firsthand my mom passed two years ago. 
with ALS. And, and uh, we had no idea at that particular time what was going to unfold. And hopefully we'll continue with research and find a cure for that dreaded disease. Dyson and Lowe make quick outs here in the fifth inning. And it's time to take a look at our print unlimited answers. 81 down, 81 to go. How many wins in the next 81? 35 to 40, 40 to 44, 5, 45 to 50. Text 432432 and enter A, B, or C. The unlimited answer sweepstakes presented by Sprint. Vote in tonight's unlimited answers poll and enter for your chance to win two Crown Club tickets to a future Royals game courtesy of Sprint. You would hope it would be C, but however, if that's going to happen, that offense is going to have to really support that pitching staff. Because it has been up and down, and even though the team went 16 and 11 in the month of June, a lot of that was because of their rotation, their bullpen, that Casey Staff ERA in June was 304, the second lowest in the American League. But the inconsistency with the offense continues to show. If, you know, that Minnesota series was that way one run, then nine runs, then two runs, then nine runs. Escobar pops up. Bourne angling his body as he stares up towards the sun, and he has another fantastic inning for him and as was shut out the Royals for five. His pastime and here on the 4th of July, but we're joined right now by the latest to sign with the Royals out of Italy, 16 years old, Martin Gasparini. And what is this like for you? You sign, you're over here watching a Major League Baseball game. Tell me about this experience. Um, it's awesome. Like, I signed and I went here right away, and being here on the 4th of July is a honor for me, and being in this great place. Ballpark. It was my first time being in the U.S. at a ball game, and it's very emotional, and it's a great sensation. It's nothing I ever felt before. Well, we are told that you are a great athlete and got the speed and, and an incredible baseball talent. We're starting to hear more about guys coming from Italy and playing, but not like we do the Dominican Republic or Venezuela. So how did you get involved in baseball? Uh, I had kind of a attraction for baseball or American sports in general. And when I got the opportunity to start to play with a baseball team there in Italy, I just couldn't miss it. And uh, when I started, just the passion and the passion grew. And uh, now I'm here. Like, so what, what's what's baseball like in Italy? I know that you were you were involved with with some really great instructors. As we're gonna see a ball hit 
Well, right past Johnny Giovatello. That's a good Italian-sounding name there. But uh, tell us about the instruction and, and your involvement in, it, in Italy. Well, it, it, baseball in Italy is growing. And uh, right now, uh, there's not a lot of interest from fans. But some players are playing here in, in the U.S. Like uh, three other players have been signing in, this, in these years. And we know Alex Lidi, who was playing with the uh, Seattle Mariners. Um, a lot of great players are developing there, so I think there will be some other players behind me to to have the, this opportunity. So you're a, you're a shortstop, you've got the speed. Uh, tell us a little bit about the type of game that you play and, and also what you love so much about baseball. Baseball is a fantastic sport. I, I, I fell in love with it like immediately. It's, it's so fun and it's it gives me... Um, application I don't know if I if it's right to say that but it's it makes me feel good and my kind of game I I'm mega is based on speed I steal a lot of bases down in Italy bond sometimes and um, doubt, not very power power numbers but uh, I can develop them so I just got there maybe to learn something hey, only 16 years old so what what's next for you now you you you, um, you sign with the Royals and and with the international signing period this week, and that ball is going to be lifted to left center field. Draw Dyson will take it and bring that in. What's next for you? Well, right now I'm I'm going to be starting in Arizona and training. We we as an Italian team uh, we have an uh, European Cup in these following weeks, and then we will have the World Cup in in the start of September so uh, this this thing just got started so I will learn how to handle it and how to move here in the USA which is a, a, a country that I'm not used to because it's so much different from Italy. All right before we let you go I just want to know what, what's your impression of watching a big league game here in person what, what do you think of the, the skill and what you're seeing? It's completely different than uh, something I've ever seen before. Uh, you can tell these guys have Work and made a lot of training, and their journey has been long to to become a major league ball player. And I I have respect for this player for everything they've done and for for their um, for the fact that they became baseball player. That's a hard thing to do. So I completely respect all these guys from the first to the last. Well, I want to wish you congratulations and we're looking forward to following your career in the minor leagues and hopefully seeing you up here in the future and uh, great to have you here in the United States and at Kauffman Stadium. Congratulations. Thanks. All right, guys, there you have it. Martin Gasparini, I know, Viz, you were talking about it the other day. And, HUD, you always talk about playing in three countries and struggling with just that one language of English. I I'd say he's doing all right. Oh, man, are you kidding me? That's a future star right there, Goldie, you just interviewed. That kid, wow, what a, a life's experience that awaits this young man in professional baseball here in the United States. It's beautiful. His language, he's well-spoken already. This kid's got star written all over him. I watched him. They showed some highlights on the big board there on him. And, you know, immediately, Royce Clayton came to my name. Really? A shortstop. He was a great shortstop. And, and I saw the fluidity he had, his foot speed. And, you know, speed is a beautiful commodity to have. When you train it, you work this kid, he's going to really excel, and hopefully we see him here in the next few years. You never know. Yeah, I was really impressed by his confidence, the way he was able to articulate. Here's a young man who grew up in Italy and speaks English so well with such confidence. And that's what it takes, Hud, because he's going to have to go from Europe to the United States at the age of 16, away from mom and dad, and uh, cut his teeth in professional baseball here. Chisenhall will accept the walk here, so now the bases are loaded. And out comes Dave Island, because this is an important moment in the game. James upset with the umpire's call. Lance Barksdale and Kansas City trying to stay in it. Drew Stubbs who had a two run home run off of James back in the second inning will come to the plate with the bases loaded and only one out. 
Well, you know, you're not going to be exactly on top of your game every time you go out there. Okay. But really, when you're only getting 3.53 runs of support, I mean, that's tough to be able to you know, substantiate between your performance as far as your wins and losses when you don't get any run support. That's the American League's third lowest, despite the Royals scoring nine runs for him in his last start. So there's, you know, he's, if he can continue to hold him right here, then he can get out of this. Maybe they can find something off of Jimenez, who's on top of his game. And Stubbs is a tough guy to double up. He has only hit into one double play in 286 at bats. And he singles to center field. This will score two. So a huge game for Drew Stubbs. Yeah, and he was due. You get a home run in your first at bat, you know you're off to something special. And bases loaded, he didn't mess around. He went ahead and just swung at James Shields' first pitch. And that'll be it for James. It's 5 0 Cleveland. It's going to be really difficult for Kansas City to come back against Jimenez the way he is pitching. Our Chevy call to the bullpen brings on J.C. Gutierrez. Back from the Royals, Worlds of Fun and Drury Hotels. Book your hotel room at DruryHotels.com slash triple play and you'll have the opportunity to purchase Royals tickets and Worlds of Fun passes at a 30% discount. For more information or to book now, go to DruryHotels.com slash triple play. And there's Drury right across the street. So Pretty convenient to the ballpark. Here is J.C. Gutierrez. All right, Gutierrez is going to come in. His job, if the Royals are going to have any kind of chance to get back in this, is to go after these guys with this good mid 90s fastball and above, breaking ball and his split finger occasionally. Be able to guide them down in the strike zone. Against a very patient team. Gutierrez with a 292 ERA in 21 games this year. He finished things up on Friday night in Minnesota, working the ninth and fanning two of the three batters that he faced. He can bring it mid to upper 90s. Michael Boring goes after the first pitch at 94 and fouls it off strike one. Indians with one in the first, two in the second, two so far in the sixth. And 
Jimenez has allowed just two hits. Strike two. That's what Gutierrez has to do. Coming in throwing good low strikes. Bourne didn't like it. He's taking his time. Body language telling Lance Barksdale that he didn't like it. One and two. Second base could be two. Escobar not in time. Almost. It's exactly what Gutierrez wanted. Stay down in the zone, working ahead. It's hard to double up a guy like Bourne. Got two outs. Look at Escobar. Touching that bag with his toe. Not in time. Now JC will try and keep Cabrera quiet. Shields gave up five runs in five and a third innings. Runner goes, pitch is swung on, popped up, left side. Mustak is backing up on the edge of the infield grass, makes the catch, and no more damage against the Royals. It is a 5 nothing Cleveland lead as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. to game break on this 4th of July. Yeah, we got the hot dog race, but in Washington, they have the president's race. We'll speed it up because we don't want Abe to slow things down here a little bit. And George Washington. Yeah, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson out there. And Abe Lincoln, and I believe we might have seen uh, Teddy Roosevelt there too. And I don't know if that thing's fixed or not, but good to see all the presidents getting a little exercise, Fizz. Yeah, and also they work together. Yeah. Well, when you think about it, how many uh, ex-Royals have there been who could represent? How about UL Washington representing George Washington? Or Frank White, Vita Blue, Red Shandies, who's a St. Louis Cardinal, but there's your red, white, but, and blue. But the fact look at that this. Abe Lincoln handing off. That's friendship right there. Yeah, but look at look at the pass there of the baton of the flag. I mean, that, that was very fundamentally sound. They both were sure before they relayed it. They could get it to the next guy. So first president sure, second president quick. That's right. Don't drop. Eric Hosmer, the batter, 
He has one of the two hits today, both singles. And Spider Man is here, and the Royals will need maybe a Spider Man type performance to enjoy their 26th come from behind victory this year. But what tell you, Jimenez has really been tough. 85 pitches, and 52 have been strikes. And he has been commanding the ball in that zone. And the sixth inning, of course, is our Sonic Slam inning, and a contestant is Debbie Hassett from. Overland Park if the Royals hit a home run in this inning Debbie will win eleven hundred dollars. But if the Royals hit a grand slam out of the park Debbie will win twenty five grand from Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. Well Debbie the sixth inning was a good one for KC yesterday as they scored four times. And Hosmer starts the sixth inning well with a base on balls. This is the fourth walk by. Jimenez, but the Royals have not been able to tap into that. They're going to have to mount a rally here and pretty quick. Osmer's 24th walk on the season. It's good. Jimenez came in with 44 walks in 83 and two thirds innings. So he's given up his share of walks. Billy Butler came in with a nine game hit streak, 13 for 35, but he's 0 for 1 with a walk today. Ball one. Both of these teams played a game that ended a little after one o'clock. Royals, of course, missing their star Alex Gordon, not playing because of a right hip contusion and a possible concussion. Although all of the reports are very favorable, very encouraging. The tests that they did on Alex. Oh, that's some of the best news oh. of the Fourth of July. That Alex Gordon. Is going to be okay. Rex, I wanted to get your thoughts on the Fourth of July uh, names that we were throwing out when we showed that President's race. You know, we were talking about U. L. Washington, who played shortstop for the Royals, and the red, white, and blue. How about Red Shandies, Frank White, Vita Blue? Oh, there's ties all over the place, it is it? It's, a, it's a Matt holiday. It, it is. It's a it's a wonderful occasion to celebrate. Presidents, those who've supported our country for independence. Fans trying to help Billy Frank White. Yeah, with this count here, three and one. Back to back walks to Hosbert and Billy Butler open this sixth inning. And Mike Moustakis comes to the plate. Out comes Santana, and here comes Mickey Calloway for a visit. Jimenez, even though he has walked five, he has such great late movement on his pitches. And he does have the ability to get a lot of ground ball outs, and that's what he wants here. Six ground ball outs thus far. And let's hear what our fans have to say with our sprint unlimited answers question the Royals 39 and 42 the first half of the season how many wins in the next 81 47 percent said between 40 and 45 thanks for both look if, uh, if the 45 wins do happen you know, that would lead them over 500 and that would be happy for that man right there he'd love that because the offense has yet to really click City came in seventh in batting, but only 13th in run scored. Two on, nobody out. Mike goes after the first pitch and pops it foul, strike one. Because while we're on that subject, I gotta tell you the Detroit Tigers last year at this point in the season were 39 and 42. Okay, they might have. Might have a little bit more offense than the Royals and have, experience. But, yeah, but but look, it's uh, it's you're it's, right. It's not any critical time in the season. However, the Royals can't afford to slip. Rex, I, more I, ground, losing more ground. Here. I'm not sure if you read that Jeff Flanagan uh, article on Fox Sports Kansas City. He did an interview with two veterans, James Shields and Miguel Tejada, and they asked how early you really focus on the standings, and both said late. James Shields says, I wait until August. I mean, the, the Rays a few years ago.
came from like nine back in the month of September to make the postseason. Jimenez had 94 pitches. He's fallen behind Mike Moustakas. He moves his wanting to pull. There's no doubt. He, he's looking for his pitch, and you know he's able he's able to do that on outside pitches if, if it's elevated. Ball three. And yet, Rex, even though he's pulling the ball more, four of his last seven hits have been to left field. What does that tell you? Because that he's staying on the ball long. He's seeing the ball deep to the catcher's glove. But we all know what we want to see a three run bomb. Towards first base, Reynolds covers, and it's dropped! The bases will be loaded on the air. Okay, tough transfer there from Reynolds to Jimenez. Tough angle for Reynolds to get that ball to him. And with the pitcher running to first base, trying to catch the ball and touch the base at the same time, it's not easy here. And see that can happen. But what can't happen is we see Reynolds with a tough chance. We we cannot see them doing what happened last night. They had the bases loaded against the tribe, nobody out, and they couldn't score a run. So that'll be an error on Jimenez. You could see that super slow motion that he had a chance to catch the ball and it dismissed it. The Boston Red Sox and the Seattle Mariners have the most grand slams this year with four. Kansas City right behind with three. Two have been struck by Alex Gordon. Alex hit one of those slams in game one of this series. Here is Lorenzo Cain. It has been 51 at bat since Lorenzo's last home run. And that came against the Detroit Tigers on June 12th. Okay, you got to just focus on your pitch that you can drive and do the damage. He's not going to give it to you. Let Kataras, who's on deck, take it. Some way, you know, you got to you got to make some inroads on a guy who's been dealing most of the game. You got him in trouble. You got to make him pay. Hosmer third, Butler second, Mustakas first. Kane takes it low and in three and one. This could be the last batter that Jimenez faces after pitching brilliantly for five innings. A little bit of barbecue, barbecue sauce. Hit it a ton from Billy. It's going to help him here. It is July 4th, so people are starting to light their charcoals. Three and two. Rally sauce is out. Hit it a ton. <laughs> the Jimenez, he just is hoping that he can keep a ball down below the knees that's out over the plate. That's what he's hoping for. Now Lorenzo has to keep doing what he's doing. You don't want to take a call third here. You got to be a little bit more aggressive. Widen that plate just a little. And look to drive in some runs. He hits it well. Left center field. That's a way back. And how about this fans? We've got our fourth grand slam of the year. And Kansas City right back in it. And how about this? Debbie has it from Overland Park. You've got 25 grand. Shot the house. Low came on a line drive. Ignites this Kauffman Stadium crowd and makes Debbie a $25,000 winner. Congratulations, Debbie and Locaine, for getting your team back into it in what could be a, a very important series victory here.
Yeah. <laughs> it's about the sauce. That barbecue sauce is working. And for Locaine to hit his first career slam. When we talked about it the other day when Alex Gordon hit his, that's a full slab. They're getting on the grill right now. That's right. Put it out there. Oh, that was a special hit. Now that ball was down and Locaine, he provided the lift with a little backspin. Don't get bigger fireworks than that. Declare their independence from Ubaldo Jimenez on this 4th of July holiday. And you can vote for your Royals Player of the Month, sponsored by Majestic and Rally House. Vote at Rally House stores and get a chance to go on field and meet the winning player. I'm jumping on Locaine for that award for this month. Why not? They need him to get hot. A slam in game one of this series by Alex Gordon to get the Royals back even. And now a slam in the the final game of this series to pull the Royals to within one. Here is George Kataris. Kataris with a shot to right field. And fans, look at this! We tie the game! The runs keep piling on, and so does the cash. Does Debbie win 1100 now, Fizz? No, I have no idea. I am not the banker. You'll have to talk to Monopoly about that. Well, it's it's a it's a solo homer, and she was online for 1100 for that, but she already won the 25 grand. <laughs> and George Kataris, third home run, couldn't have came at a better time. Nice. Well, we do know that Debbie is going to have to take all of her family and friends to Sonic for some steak burgers. Heck, how about that that breakfast burrito they got? It's my favorite. Back to back, and you know, George Kataris, the last time he hit a home run, and went back to back with Dyson. That was June 23rd. We've got ourselves a brand new ball game. Oh, and new life. That that was a beautiful stroke by Kataris. Followed up. That's Salami. First career Salami for Lorenzo Cain. Johnny Giovatella to right field. Gets the ball in the air. Playable for Stubbs who brings it down. And that's the first out after the first five Royals reach in the sixth inning to tie this game. All right. George Kataris very patient. Talk about MVP. He looks for these pitches all the time. Now he stays ready. Okay, by taking good solid batting practices every day, he pumps those balls into those seats with regularity. And now Moose is saying, wow, we've seen it in BP. Now it's nice to see it at 310 in the afternoon here on 
a beautiful holiday. And they have jumped on Cody Allen who is the guy who gave up the long home run to Eric Hosmer yesterday and now he gives one up to George Kataris. Here is Gerard Dyson. You know Dyson so exciting. That's why you'd love to see him get on Lorenzo Cain with the grand slam got the Royals back in it. Kataris tied it. Joe's bunt takes a strike. Yeah, that's a power curve. That, that ball with that rotation coming down like that. That's a tough one to get on top of. Rex, was it easier for you to bunt a fastball or a curve? Curve, no doubt, because it's already going down. It's easier to bunt the top half when the ball is moving down. And there's strike three called. Second time that Dyson has taken one looking today. And David Lowe will come up. He's been a bit quiet since that sensational Sunday, just one hit in his last 11 at bats. Four for four and Sunday, and the Royals' victory at Minnesota three doubles, a home run. Ball one. Nice to see the runs come, even though James Shields left. He won't qualify. He won't have a decision, but at least take him off the hook. He deserves that. And that guy's been a warrior all year long. And really, all James cares about is the team win when he pitches. Teams win. Yeah, this would be a nice, nice W for them if they can somehow find a way to get the lead and hold it. Cody Allen, he's going with more breaking balls now. He's saying, you know what? They might be on my fastball. I think I better try to mix in something else. Low strikes out. But Debbie Hassett, you may want to send a thank you card to Lorenzo Kane for making you $25,000 richer. Low Kane with a grand slam. Kataris then ties it with a solo blast. Having fun at the K. Hit him a ton. Derby Series features the Kahneman Relish on Saturday, July 20th versus the Tigers. The first 10,000 fans through the gates will receive a Relish bobblehead courtesy of High V and Farmland. Gates open at 4.30, so make sure to arrive early. For tickets, go to royals.com slash hot dog derby. And Rex, I'd like to put in a few votes for a barbecue race. 
you know, where barbecue sauce races along with mustard and relish and, and ketchup. And I think Joel Goldberg should wear that barbecue uh, co- costume. Well, they can have some of the major barbecues in town, have dress up in bottles and come out here and have a barbecue race. I think it's a great idea, Fizz. And we, and Joel, we could actually have like, you know, hit it a ton against Oklahoma Joe's, against Jack Stacks, against Gates. What are your thoughts on this? Well, first of all, you're going to have an argument over which four get in or which three get in because there's so many. Yeah. I am in if Hud is in. What a that question. That is a great Joel. challenge. No, no, no. Look, look. Hud, I'll, you'll do it. I'm all about it because Kansas City's known for many things. Okay, but one of the things that. The ball players especially love coming here is the barbecue. So people all over the world know about that. So why not have a little race with barbecue sauces out there? I mean, it would be a, a unique, our own special runoff. Well, whatever it is, Hud, I know that I know for a fact that if I say I'll do it, if you do it, I'll be happy to race. Joe. I, I know you will. Put, put suit me up tomorrow. I did the uh, years ago when I was in the National League. I, I was I ran in the race in in Milwaukee. In the um, in the hot dog race or the sausage race up there, I finished in second place. Yeah, now that you have skills, Joel, but you know what? I tried to get in that race, and the team that I worked for at the time would not let me participate. Well, I, I got in with three kids that were on the grounds crew. I found myself in fourth place and realized I better hightail it, <laughs> and so I I put on the afterburners right behind home plate. I found out later that night. Scott Rowland said to me. Were you one of those hot dogs? I don't know how he knew. Three of them had shorts and shirts on and T-shirts on, and I had a shirt and tie underneath the thing. And I said, yeah, I said, I wish I wish I would have known. I would have tripped you up or something. But I did try to, to run in that president's race in D.C. too. I guess I wasn't presidential enough. They said no. Wow, that surprises me. Yeah, really shocking. President Joel. Right now, a dangerous time because J.C. Gutierrez walk the guy who has stolen more bases for Cleveland this year than any other Jason Kipnis right after the team scored five to tie the game at five. Michael Brantley was two hits in the game. Gutierrez has quick feet. Keep him close enough. Kataris, he's allowed, he's caught five out of 20. And stealing this year when he's had his starts out there, that's 25%. It's not bad. There's a line drive base hit to left field. Boy, that, that is an impressive piece of hitting by Michael Brantley. Didn't try and do too much. That's what he's done the whole game. It's his You're third right. hit. He's just kind of laying him out there. And Ned Yost, he's going to come out and get Gutierrez. He's going to go with Aaron Crow because Kansas City needs a strikeout here. Their bullpen has not been as sharp as it was, particularly the early part of June when it was sensational. Hopefully Crow will be right back on beam after his team tied it up at five.
right hander out of Topeka Kansas Missouri Tiger will face Carlos Santana Mark Reynolds and Mike Avilas and he comes on in a tough situation with runners on first and second. It's important that he just stays straight through and down to Kataris. It's down in the strike zone with a good fastball slider. Double play would be nice. But you said they, they need a strikeout. It won't be easy. This guy, Santana, is a very good hitter. He is lined out, struck out, and singled today. Crow has inherited 31 runners this year, and nine of those have scored. So we don't. Open against that. Santana bolts it to right field. That will drive in at least one, maybe two. Brantley will be sent home. And it is now a seven to five score. Just like that. First pitch. Kataris wants it low and away, and look where it was. It was up and away. He was waiting. Now, Mark Reynolds. He gets strike one. Kansas City did a fantastic job coming back to tie the game, but the bullpen could not keep Cleveland's offense quiet. This is a team that came in here averaging nine runs per game in that four game sweep of the Chicago White Sox. They scored six in the opener, they scored five last night, and they have scored seven thus far in the final game of this series. Reynolds strikes out for the 102nd time this year. Mike Avilas takes strike one. Mike had some terrific years with Kansas City. You might remember he was the team's player of the year in 2008 when he hit two, 325. Pulls it to third. Mustakas checks the runner. Throws high, but Hosmer is there to come down in the bag for out number two. Crow might be thinking, man, if I could have that first pitch back. First pitch he threw Santana was shot to right field for a two base hit, drove in two. It's Lonnie Chisenhall. Well, George Kataris, he put down fastball, but he sat on the outer lower half of the plate there. And he was hoping that Crow could hit, hit, hit that spot. And he elevated about, about three or four inches. Really, hitters sometimes all he needs a half inch mistake or an inch. And as you know, a lot of times a guy like Santana's walking up there and saying, if he gives me a first pitch fastball in my spot, yeah, I'm going to be on it. And he didn't miss it. Crow has a 1 2 advantage. Lonnie Chisenhall has proven his excellence in the minor leagues. Hit 390 at AAA this year. But still trying to prove himself at the big league level, hitting 226. He's 0 for 2 with a walk today. We had a roller coaster ride last night into the morning. 
two and a half hour rain delay a bank of lights went out another delay four lead changes in the game and this one's much like last night hopefully the result will be the same it's a 2 2 count to Chisholm Hall pretty good spot right there didn't get the call Got the call there with a swing and a miss from Chisholm Hall. But Cleveland scores two on the double by Santana. And they have taken a 7-5 lead over Kansas City. What year did the Royals win the most through their first 81 games? 1976, 1980, 1985, or 2003? Ah, oh, we get a little multiple choice this afternoon. I'm going to guess. I'm going to see. 1980. I'm going to go, I'm going to go with that world championship run. Well, you know, they won the world championship, but they didn't have. A team that was just dominating and in the, the late 70s and the early 80s. I mean, they, they were winning over 100 games. I'm trying to remember the final record in 1976. But that was the Brett McRae White. That's just through the first era. 81 games. Exactly. We don't know. Exactly. So we're guessing. We've got multiple choices for the fans. Thank you for your votes. Hey, Kansas City has got 24 and 19 in their July 4th games in the past. We do have a new pitcher. It will be right hander Joe Smith. Joe has been really tough this year on right handers. Hitting just 185 lefties not doing too well against him either. Hitting 200. Well ERA is nice and low. The league's only hitting a buck 93 off him. 4 0 record, 201 ERA, only 21 hits allowed in 31 and a third innings, and 30 strikeouts against 10 walks. But all those numbers are just numbers, really. It's all about Escobar and company and see if they can get on base. Try to cause a little bit of commotion going on out there. Now, sidearm guys typically fizz, have a sinker, slider. That's exactly what Joe Smith has. You can bunt on those guys a lot easier. Ball's coming down. See if Escobar tries to get on with a bun. Escobar has been scuffing a little bit. One for 11 in this series. And the only bun he tried was a sacrifice. Well, he showed it there. Yep, he's thinking the same way I was. 
Chisholm Hall, he's, he's playing even with the bag. He's not in on the cut of the grass. So Escobar doesn't have to be fine with it. But that one was a little bit too far out of the zone for Escobar. Takes low. So when you, no matter where a pitcher releases that ball, you've got to pick up the release point. If it's sidearm, great. Look in that area. Escobar, Hosmer, Butler in this seventh inning. Kansas City sent eight men to the plate in the sixth inning, scored five times to tie the game, but immediately the uh, Cleveland Indians came back with two in their half of the seventh. It's a 3 1 count. It was walks that started the trouble for. Jimenez in the sixth inning when he walked Hosmer walked Butler and Moustakis reached on the air before the grand slam by Kane and now a walk by Joe Smith and Kansas City has a nice start in the bottom of the seventh inning. Man oh man how many times do lead off walks come around to hurt you. Six walks enjoyed by Kansas City today and that's a good sign. Because they came in dead last in the American League in walks averaging just 2.4 per game. He weighed him out. Osmer struck gold last night in the seventh with a home run that went 436 feet off Cody Allen. A strike. Yeah, he's wearing that out, <laughs> and I think it's good. We have Keep shown him so often, and he lifted it to the heavens when Kane went deep. Okay, backdoor slider. Now Smith's getting it, getting all of a sudden, getting his rhythm. He's got a late-breaking slider, and he's got a run and two seamer, so he's got pitches moving both directions. Continues to work away from Eric Hosmer. Eric single the left. His first time up. And, and Rex, if you're Eric and you see this pattern, are you just going middle away? Yeah, I'm going to stay short to the ball. I'm not going to try to do too much. Let Billy, who's on deck, take it if you don't get your pitch. And he finally comes inside, and Eric hits him down the line, but foul. And he's going to he broke his bat. Yeah, he'll need a new piece of lumber there. Santana have a little chat with him as this ball it just stayed out over the plate a little bit too much for Santana. It's comfort there. He says, you know what? We got to make sure we keep that ball down the way. Maybe we try a two seamer away for him. But if you leave it up, Hosmer, he's got great pop to the opposite field and he's in a groove right now. So wouldn't be asking too much for Eric to hit another one like he did last night. All you know, his fans want to see it. Seven home runs in the last three plus weeks since June 13th. And here we are in the 4th of July. And they're thinking Escobar might be going, who is 11 for 11 stealing bases this year. That ties him with teammate Elliot Johnson and the Yankees' Jason Nix for the most in the American League among players who have not been caught. High in the air. Deep to center. Get up. Born back. This yes. game is tied. Haas has done it again. Sauce for everyone. Beautiful shot again in Hosmer. Making a believer out of the fans here at the K's. This kid is unconscious right now. <laughs> it looked like he yelled out, power of the sauce. <laughs> oh, man, I'm going to tell you what. That ball's a mistake. That's the one he hit the center field last night on. Same location. Maybe he was elevated a little bit more. 
But with that type of air underneath that ball, that thing was out of here. With no question. I tell you, as much as these guys love him, they would love to win this game for Alex Gordon. How about that swing? Oh, look at these guys. This guy's thinking, what? I got to spit my gum out. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to swallow this gum here. I'm too, getting excited. Billy flies out to right field. But Kansas City, no quit in them. They're trying to execute their 26th come from behind victory this year. Because there is no quit in this young Royals team. That's a, uh, a characteristic that was established by Ned Yost early in the season. He goes, guys, we've got energy and youth on our side. Let's push, push, and push, and don't give up. And Ned kept on saying, wait until the offense comes together oh. where they are all clicking. And there was a time, and certainly... It happened in spring training. We saw that. But really, the first three months, the offense has not been running on all cylinders, where you get quality at bat after quality at bat. And there are times we're seeing it lately, Rex. We talked about that roller coaster ride. Minnesota, classic example. One run, nine runs, two runs, nine runs. Fizz, I'm talking about the, the ability to not quit. And that, yeah. was, that was established early in April. When we went to Philadelphia, the team, the fifth, sixth, and seventh in that series, where they should have swept the Phillies, they took two out of three. And that is caught by Chisholm Hall. And Charlie Manuel, world champion manager for the Phillies, told me the next day after one game where we just pummeled him. He said, man, you guys come to play and you don't give up. They don't, they don't quit. How about this ovation for Lorenzo Cain? Started the comeback. Kansas City has Luke Hochaver warming in their pump pen. Joe Smith came in with incredible numbers out of that bullpen and ERA at two. He had not allowed a run in quite some time. Left-handers only batting 200. But Eric Hosmer got a pitch on a 3-2 count, and he rode it out again well over 400 feet to dead center. Ninth home run of the year. That leads the team. Chisholm Hall. Barely gets Kane at first base. But Eric Hosmer... Seven of those eight home runs. What a bombardier. We've got a sauce long. For his first major league win, Red Sox up seven to two. White Sox in Baltimore, tied at two apiece. Nice day for Jose Quintana. Yankees all over the Twins up at Target Field.
More holiday baseball, Tampa Bay and Houston also deadlocked at two down at Minute Maid Park. Cubs in Oakland just underway as the A's will then make their way here. And Detroit and Toronto, well, they don't need to play afternoon baseball. They already had their national holiday earlier in the week. That would be Canada Day, which George Katara <laughs> celebrates, guys. I'll always remember that great celebration you had last year in Toronto when, Joel, you was it Everett Tiford and Bruce Chen, and you took them around, and uh, you asked them what they, how they celebrated July 4th, and you asked the citizens of Canada how they celebrated Independence Day, and it was such a funny feature that you did. Skills. Joel has many talents. He does. He's got them. He's, he's giving them up for the people daily. And here's Luke Hochaber. His job shut him out in the eighth. Drew Stubbs has had an incredible game already with four RBIs. A two run home run in the second, two RBI single in the sixth. Hoach needs to be airtight out there, executing just like that. Oh. Beautiful spot. Getting ahead of hitters. Keep the momentum on your team's side by trying to get after these guys. One, two, three. He has a 2-2-3 two, two, earned run average. This is his 25th game out of the bullpen. Power arm. Almost got him to chase. They do appeal. He did not go in the count as one and two. That's scary. Five leadoff runners have reached today. Four have scored. So keep speedy stubs off the bases. Right field playable for Kane. One out. Rex Lorenzo Kane hit a home run on July 4th. I was at the game in 1969 at Old Municipal Stadium when Bob Oliver hit the very first Grand Slam in Royals history. July 4th, 1969, off the author of the novel which became a bestseller ball for Jim Bout. I love to hear Denny Matthews tell the stories of the old municipal stadium and uh, that corrugated uh, roof that they had where the fans would bang on it make all this noise and then he said you couldn't hear us speak. Got some great stories from the old ballpark, and of course, they built Royal Stadium in 1973. There's Danny and Ryan, Hall of Famer on the left, and uh, the great broadcaster Ryan Lefevre. Here is the 1 1 pitch, and it's a strike. So Ho Chaver jumps ahead 1 and 2. Just barely outside. Michael Bourne took a step out, looked back at home plate umpire Lance Barksdale as if to say, that's not strike three. To left field. David Lowe, he comes up with it. Well, I had to do a double take. I wasn't sure if that was low or Alex Gordon. Of course, we know Alex is out, but look, by the way that low got a jump on contact, that's exactly what Alex does. He got out there, he made a great adjustment at the end. As you see, he had to veer to his right towards the foul line. Is the ball going to slice that way? Beautiful grab for Hoach. That was big. And it keeps one of their fastest players off the bases with. One out instead there's nobody on two out and Cabrera is the batter. Good power. 
He has always hurt the Royals. Cabrera with a great history against Kansas City, and he takes inside for ball one. Cabrera, though, has been a little quiet in this series. He's 0 for 3 today, 2 for 10 in the series. The Royals bat in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Kataris, Giovatella, Dyson coming up. Three and zero. Oh. Both of these teams used to close games. The Royals have played the most one-run games in the American League: 31, 14, and 17. But. Cleveland does a much better job. They're 18 and 8. There's a strike. It's 3 and 1. Three and two. Okay, jumping right back into the count. Good hard fastball away, and then that breaking ball there. So now you got Cabrera thinking. He's got to be looking for the fastball, but if Hoach puts that 96 on the outside corner, there's not much he can do with that. Well, maybe he buries a little slider. Doris is calling in. Yes! Got him! Great job of coming back after down in the count 3 and 0. Oh, Hoach is doing all he can, and David Lowe says, I'll help you a little bit, brother. On the 4th of July, we got to fly. Get this game. <laughs>I'm brought to you by Miller Lite. We had a flyover. We had patriotic colors all over the yard. We had the rally sauce out. And we had drama started by Lorenzo Cain. Seven, seven ball game. Kansas City's fourth Grand Slam this year. Debbie Hassett from Overland Park won $25,100 because of two home runs struck in the sixth inning. Debbie's going good. She's taking her friends to Sana. Woo, man. Cash it in. You know, and George Kataris, Fizz, he's not done either. The way this guy can put a swing on, he's already hit a nice solo home run to compliment Lorenzo's slam. And he also has great plate discipline, has walked in this game. That was back in the second inning. Ryan Shaw, the new pitcher. One ball, one strike. It's okay, George was looking for that fastball there. Just a little bit elevated, and we've seen Shaw do that. 
He'll go 96 up top to try to get some strikeouts. Got an outstanding cutter in the slider combination. He's got a curve and a change, but mainly those hard sliders and cutters. Left handers hitting 286 off him. Right handers 221. I don't think George liked the last call from Barksdale. Evens the count at two and two. Okay, it's a very difficult job when you're an everyday player trying to perform out here and square up the ball with regularity. But when you catch once or twice a week, that's it. Maybe actually once every two weeks for George. Man, I can't tell you how difficult it is to, to try to have timing up there. And he's already contributed. He's got th this All guy. three. Uh, Dayton Moore did a wonderful job for his organization by uh, supplying Ned with some bench players with veteran savvy. Guys that have energy, guys that are smart players, and that's made a huge difference so far. How about that at bat? Unbelievable. But I'm not shocked. He was down in the count one and two, still showed that great patience. This guy, George Kataris, he makes things happen when he gets in there. And let's answer that trivia question we asked earlier. Ooh, is that a hint? What year did the Royals win the most through the first 81 games? The answer is 76. 51 and 30. That's when they really started building on the New York Yankees, and they had tremendous playoff games at the end of that decade. Man, I hated those Yankees. They knocked us off until George took Goose deep. It surprises me you would use that word hate, Fizz. That's well, not in your vocabulary. Darn Yankees. Okay. You're right. I, I respect them. But I didn't like him back then, and neither did our cameraman, Ron Swan. All right, so what Gio's trying to do now is very difficult. He, he's going to try to sacrifice him over. However, Shaw knows from his National League days that the hardest bunt to bunt is a fastball, Fizz. You asked me that earlier. He said, what's an easier bunt, a fastball or a curveball? And I told you, breaking balls are easier. That's why Shaw knows he's going to bunt here. He's giving him up with fastballs. And Elliot Johnson really doesn't need to get to second base with a sacrifice bunt. He can rip you off. He's 11 for 11. He does not go, and Gia Vitella fouls it back to the screen. The Royals thinking they might have something on with a pitch out. On an 0 2 count. Johnny has not struck out. He had that great debut of 2013, but looking for his first hit since. And right now would be a perfect time. Well, one thing we've witnessed the last couple of series, and I mean, excuse me, a couple of games, was Geo flew out to the track yesterday twice in left field. And tonight, or today earlier, he flew out to center field fairly deep but he just does he's got to stay on top of that ball he's this is this is not a ballpark for Johnny to keep trying to get home runs in stay down through the ball Johnson goes and the pitch hits Johnny G of Vitella he'll take that two on nobody out here in the eighth inning better check that ball that ball's got to have a dent in it <laughs> you hit that dude that's like hitting a man of steel you are a piece of work, you know that? Yeah, look, he's wearing that one for the team, and there's nothing wrong with that. Watch him, he turns perfectly. You want to take it, you take it in the back. There's that hood of the Cobra right there I talk about. <laughs> That's the latissimus dorsi, Fizz. More hitters get drilled on the hood than anywhere else. But with Gio, dude, you better check that baseball. I was hearing you talk with Danny Parkins on 610 the other day about the hood of the Cobra. That's exactly. And he was cracking up. Well, that's what I'm talking JC about. J.C. Pearson, he thinks football players don't even say that. <laughs> look, baseball player, that's a whole different animal, man. Oh, I love you, man. Well, look, uh, Gio, he made Terry Francona spring off of his feet and get out to that mound and make another pitching change. He's saying, here they come again. They just don't stop. Neither do you. <laughs> I'm going.
Ray takes us up to target field. Ichiro with the triple. Right now, just a home run shy of the cycle. Yankees all over the Twins late in that one. And guys, I saw on Twitter today or last night, our good friend Dick Bramer, the play-by-play man on Fox Sports North, saying might sound weird, but he was more excited about Kyle Gibson's second start than his first. Pitched great against the Royals after getting that big lead against Will Smith. Today, five and a third, 11 hits and eight earned runs. Oh, we'll be throwing for the Cleveland Indians, and Dyson wants to get that bunt down, and it's wide of the mark by plenty. Rich Hill has not pitched well lately. Last 15 games, a 10-4-5 ERA. Raises earned run average from 309 to its current 655. Okay. Johnson at second, Giovatella at first. Get the bunt down. Let's get it down. Don't try to run. And it comes way inside. The runners will advance as Dyson got out of the way. And now he can swing. Hill has not even been close to home plate on the first two pitches. Okay. Talked about it in game one of this series, what to watch out for. It's the wild pitches. Cleveland leads the world with 48 wild pitches this year. And I, I'm glad that didn't hit Dyson. It looked like it might have hit off of his bat. And now Gerard. With the 2-0 count, he's going to get walked in tension. It's up to David Lowe to see if he can make something happen here. And the Royals bench only has Salvador Perez, who must catch, obviously, and Miguel Tejada available. Alex Gordon is not available because of the right hip contusion, possible concussion that he suffered last night. So Lowe must face the left-hander, and the Kansas City Royals have the bases loaded with nobody out here in the eighth inning. Yeah, but why not go to Salvador Perez? Give him a chance. Take a chance it that you're not. It will be Salvador. Take a chance that you're not going to, you know, need an extra catcher here. This is a good move by Ned. But if something happens to Guitaris, so Moose will be the backup. He'll have to go in there. And Rex, I'm just guessing that Elliot Johnson will play the outfield for the first time this year in the regular season. He did play it in spring training. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Elliot Johnson's totally capable. Terry Francona, he's going to wear a path out from that dugout to the mound, making another change here. As he wasn't expecting Salvador Perez to come off of that bench. And Salvador is third in the American League with runners in scoring position, hitting 383. Salvador was going to come in any way to catch because Kataris was pinch run for by Johnson. So we will see a change here and a right hander to face Perez when we come back. Why in Kansas City, Cleveland seven, Kansas City seven, bases loaded, Johnson, Giovatella, Dyson all on. 
Royals fans loving it. You mentioned a wild one. Well, that can be Albert's case. I talked about the 48 wild pitches. He's got five wild pitches in 29 in the third innings and 15 walks. Salvi's looking to drive. He wants to help Lorenzo Kane with the bus duties today. Infield is in. Ball one. And Salvi's looking for his first pinch hit of the year. He's 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter. Back up the middle is always the biggest hole. Down the line. That's a fair ball. Johnson to score. Giovatella to score. Send Dyson in. It's a bases clearing double by Salvador Perez. How about hooking one down the line? Alvarez thought he tricked him on a 95 mile an hour fastball. Says, no, 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 no. I'm ready. Ned made the right move. Right down and like clears the sacks and Dyson scoring from first base was a cakewalk. A track meet has broken out here at the K. 10 to 7 Kansas City in the bottom of the eighth. And Greg Holland starting to throw down in the Kansas City pen. This crowd at the K Fizz that, that took their Fourth of July afternoon off. Had no idea they were going to be entertained with 10 runs on only six hits. Great crowd. July 4th celebration. Barbecue with the hit a ton rally sauce after the game. <laughs> Not done yet, though. No. And while you're at it, there's nobody out. Get greedy and get some more. Exactly. How about the come from behind victories? That is a great stat to have, and you build on that through the rest of the season. Escobar. It is caught by the left fielder Michael Brantley so Perez back to second base and one thing that will not be lost on Ned Yost with all of these offensive numbers that Kansas City has shown with the grand slam and the home runs and a bases clearing double by Salvador Perez. Luke Hochaver gave them a excellent eighth inning a one two three eighth inning after Kansas City had tied it. And Rex, you knew, knew, know how enormous that is after a team rallies to tie the game, much like the uh, Cleveland Indians had done. Ned Yost is taking the lead. Yeah, he's looking for an eighth inning guy, Fizz. He might have found one in Hoach. <laughs> Eric Hosmer. Gosh, there's plenty of, plenty of love to spread around here today, but let's first things first. Let's finish off these Cleveland Indians here who, who were red hot coming into this series. Hosmer's home run tied it in the bottom of the seventh. And he lines out sharply to the second baseman. Hit the ball on the screws, but a line out. And Billy Butler's coming up. Well, Albers is not exactly fooling anybody. Holland got his 18th save last night. Cleveland will have the middle of the order coming up in the ninth. Kipnis, Brantley, and Santana. Butler, 365 with runners in scoring position. Wonder how aggressively Albers will work him. He threw him a strike. It's a 1 1 count. What though? You know what? You, that one run that Salvi's sitting out there, that, that'll keep you from a slam beating you. Yeah. Kipnis backhands and throws out Billy, but Salvador Perez with the bases loaded. 
Lines a shot down the line, clears the bases. It's now 10 to 7, Kansas City going to the ninth at the K. Royals baseball is brought to you by Farmland Foods, introducing the new Boulevard Brats from Farmland. Here's to the home team. And the home team today has a 10-7 lead. Wait to strike up the grill after the ball game. Elliot Johnson will play the outfield for the first time this regular season. He did play the outfield in spring training and is an excellent athlete. And he played it a lot for Tampa Bay and Joe Madden last year. Salvador Perez takes over as the catcher and you know who comes out of the bullpen to close things out Greg Holland. Okay great stuff but his most important pitch is always strike one and strike two get ahead of guys then finish him off with your electric secondary pitches. Strike one to Kipnis. Tell you what it, it's a much easier shutdown situation with a three run lead rather than last night's one run lead. Holland came out last night and in a one run lead six to five he faced Mark Reynolds and fell behind 3 0 strike two to Kipnis but then he fought back against Reynolds and blew him away with a ninety six mile an hour fastball tell you what you have come back power like the Royals have that sends messages not only to the Cleveland Indians whom you're doing it to. But the rest of the division. I don't know. Did that ball bounce and then he fouled it off? I mean, that, that he's almost taking a page out of Vladimir Guerrero's. I book. was just going to say, you and I have seen that so many times. Watch this. Is this bounce before he he checked it with his bat? Hey, how about that's pretty good. Uh, that's cricket. Stroke and cricket, isn't it? It's a little bit off the mark. Went with that split finger pitch. Came back with the slider at 87. But you know, Kipnis had the presence of mind to step out of the box and smile at Holland. Early with the heat, late with the off speed. Kansas City trying to win their 40th game of the year. Start the second half of 2013 well. The Royals with an opportunity to sweep a doubleheader on July 4th. You're right, Fizz. <laughs> we had the first firework display in all of America last night or this morning. Came, it came around 1:30 in the morning. Yeah, that's right. Good battle between Kipnis and Holland. We had a two and a half hour rain delay 
last night. Ball game started right around 945 and then during the game a bank of lights went out so that delayed the game for a little bit. Kansas City won it six to five. Outside three and two. Kansas City has taken advantage of a lot of Cleveland mistakes. Base on balls, hit batters, errors. And they scored seven times because of those mistakes. Seven of their ten. Hit to right, Kane comes on and makes a nice sliding catch. Well, that's a great at bat there by Kipnis. I'll tell you, but even a better play by Kane. That ball was a sinking liner to Kane's left. Down the right field side, and that was not easy. He made it look easy. That's very difficult to try to pick up the spin of the ball and also be steady enough to focus it in your glove. Rob Kipnis. This Kipnis has robbed several other guys on the Royals. This has been one of those series that has had fans on the edge of their seats back and forth baseball. This is a series that Cleveland could have swept Kansas City could have swept. We had four lead changes yesterday. We've had so many lead changes in this one. At one time Cleveland led five nothing. Now Brantley down in the count nothing and two. That's why so many folks in the Midwest are watching the Royals. They're an exciting team and it's coming. Gain some confidence offensively like we've seen uh, and a, a much greater regularity over the last week or so. You go with that pitching and that defense. Shoot, man, this man, they've got a hot ticket right now. Let's see once they get to 500. George Brett and Pedro Grafol, the new interim hitting instructors who have been with the team a little more than a month. When you ask George, he always goes, we are slowly getting there. He says we're not there yet, but you can see the confidence growing every single week as the team gains consistency offensively. They scored 10 runs in the last three innings. The Indians were up 3 nothing after two. We're up 5 nothing going to the bottom of the sixth. Casey scored five to tie it. A line drive base hit to left field. Brantley's fourth hit today. I almost think he's taking a page out of Kipnis's book with that short, quick stroke. I remember a longer he's, swing last year. He's a phenomenal talent. And a reminder to our fans: Boulevard post game will be right after this contest with Joel Goldberg and Jeff Montgomery. Yeah. Royals have supplied a lot of material for those guys up there in that nice little booth. Carlos Santana, the batter. Indians have out have out hit the Royals 12 to 6, but they trail at 10-7. Santana has singled and doubled in his last two at bats. Strike two. You know what though, Cleveland's not going easy. That's two batters that Holland's face, and both of those guys have barreled him. One ball, two strikes. Sliders, split fingers, secondary pitches for Holland that are excellent. Got him. An off speed pitch that he throws Santana to strike him out two gone here in the ninth. Joel Goldberg, what do you have? Well, I'll tell you what, everybody's getting up on their feet right now, and HUD was right. We'll have plenty to talk about on Boulevard Royals Live. Here's my question to you guys. Two guests, if they hold on, 
Who would you want to hear from? Hosmer, Holland looking for his second save of the day. Perez, Kane. <laughs> what do you think? Give me two. Hmm. Well, why don't you have Salvador Perez interview all of them? <laughs> hey, you know he does that. I'm, I'm busy working the people down here, man. The people are all geeked right now. Holland's one on away from a tremendous series victory against the Tribe. Those guys with the barbecue sauce that we've been showing on camera the whole game, they're down here pointing up to the booth like I had, we had something to do with it, Fizz. Hey, guys, it's all out there. It's those guys out there. It has been a fantastic comeback from a 5 nothing deficit as late as the sixth. Ground ball third, Moustakis. Happy 4th of July, Kansas City. That's a great win. That is a spectacular series victory right there. They needed it. Three and a half back and on the move. Oakland's coming to town. Bring them. Kataris, way to make your day count. A couple of walks, a big fly, and congratulations to Lorenzo Kane. That ignited this whole rally with your first career slam. That was beautiful. Our forward play of the game is the game winning hit. Salvador Perez came up in the bottom of the eighth inning with the bases loaded and watch what he did. Down oh, the line. That was the icing on the cake here on the 4th of July. And put three candles on it for those three runs that just came home. Salvi, you're a beast. The fans were holding up the hit it ton rally sauce and they enjoyed it on this wonderful 4th of July celebration. Now they can go home, put the hit a ton on their grill with their chicken, their steaks, and have a blast.